Two weeks ago, I stopped by my local Best Buy to pick up the newest Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 Ultra. There's a couple new features they're bringing to the table this year, such as an upgraded processor and fully IP68 waterproof rating, which if you somehow need to submerge this tablet underwater, you can now. Anyways, I want to give you guys my thoughts on this from a stream perspective, such as note taking, gaming, and content creation. Welcome back to the channel. Some of y'all may already know that I graduated from college just a few months ago and a Galaxy S9 Ultra just had to come out right after I finished school. So <laughs> I think if you want the best of the best, the biggest of the biggest, and the cleanest of all clean tablets, uh, I think this is the one to go with. Samsung has been polishing and refining its tablets and productivity software longer than any other tablet maker I've personally seen. I'd recommend getting a keyboard for this if you're gonna be using this solely as your main computing device. I personally didn't find a use for it because I already have a laptop. Back in school, I had this like laptop slash tablet combo, which is super nice because I can just transfer the notes from there onto my computer. But yeah, let's start off with the elephant in the room, everyone, that big 14.6 inch beautiful AMOLED display. Oh, baby, you guys already know that Samsung makes great displays in general anywhere from from their TVs, their laptops, their foldable phones, and even uh, iPhones being their main supplier for the screens. And this is huge, okay? They're rocking a buttery smooth 120 hertz screen, which looks even better on this. Uh, as I'm sifting throughout the user interface, apps and icons just open up so, so smoothly. And even scrolling across long page text documents like essays or something like a textbook can actually look pretty mesmerizing on this. As a post-graduated student, I just think the 120 hertz screen just makes everything look super, super beautiful, very, very smooth and clean. And with a max peak brightness of 930 nits, it actually can get pretty dang bright. It's bright enough to use outdoors. I actually went outside to use uses under direct sunlight so I can see this working good if you're in a coffee shop maybe or a library with a lot of windows there's also not much of a glare issue I noticed too so it's pretty good on that the front facing camera does have a slight notch above which I think looks pretty cool it doesn't interfere while watching 16.9 aspect ratio content on here so anything like YouTube videos or something like that the notch won't even be there you won't even notice it and by far one of the more useful features I noticed on this 1848 by 2960p resolution screen is that while it is very sharp it's also very nice to split the screen in half and have two separate windows all you gotta do is hit this three button icon at the bottom right hold down an app or something drag and drop to the selected area and then you got two windows baby look at that you can have notes on one window you can have a document on the other or a video playback on the other hand I don't know you know let your heart desire do what you want with this you can even copy cutouts of like images and paste it onto your notes which is very useful for memorization classes I think like anatomy would work super well with this if you need to copy a picture of like the heart or the chambers or something like that just to give an example you can just go on google take that put it onto the other side and boom you're ready to go and when we take a look at the design of the s9 ultra it only screens premium vibes here okay samsung has done an admirable job making the bezels super super thin i think if it gets any thinner than this it'd be kind of hard to hold the tablet because then your fingers would kind of rest onto the screen. It can cause some problems like that. So for what it's worth, this is already thin enough. This is just one huge display, okay? This is really, really nice. And as far as the physical build of the tablet, it's a very sturdy chassis, weighing in at exactly 732 grams. So it's light enough to store this in your backpack, bring it around the classroom, around the house, or anything like that. The corners are very nice as well. I don't feel like they're pinching or stabbing my hands in any way. Look at this. And then you do have this really nice aluminum matte finish which does a pretty good job at repelling fingerprints. You can kind of see it sometimes but nothing like a good you know wipe on a shirt or a microfiber cloth will do the trick. You also see two lenses one for the main and the other for the ultra wide. We'll talk about those cameras in just a minute. Even though they do kind of stick out I didn't feel like it wobbled or anything like that at all. If you put this down on a table flat by itself you kind of really can't move it at all. And then obviously there's the S Pen holster which could use a little bit of work. This is the only way it could charge. You can of course put it up top on the side, 
or anything like that, but it's not gonna charge. And I think right here, this is kind of vulnerable to like, you know, moving it or dropping it. The power and volume buttons are on the right side of the tablet. It is very clicky. Sometimes you can kind of miss it because well, the tablet is very, very thin. And you got quad firing speakers, two on the bottom and two on the other side. They get pretty loud, but not loud enough to fill like a large living room area. I think this works best in a small bedroom. It is lacking a little bit of bass, but for what it's worth, the AKG speakers on this makes for a very clear and slightly punchy playback. It's also pretty unfortunate to see that there is no 3.5 millimeter audio jack in here. Man, baby, we missed out. But let's talk about how it is for note taking and productivity. So the S9 Ultra and the S Pen Kava makes for a terrific pair. There are a lot of note taking apps out there, but I found that using the Notes app from Samsung itself felt the best in terms of speed, usability, and features. It's pretty underrated, I think. Samsung Notes has pretty much everything we need to take notes, draw, and more. The Samsung menu bar makes sense. You can use almost any tool and it's very easy to use. Drawing on here is fun and intuitive. The S Pen is very, very light and responsive. I didn't feel any fatigue after using this for long periods of time, especially when it comes to taking notes. It's as light as a pencil, honestly. The S9 Ultra tracks the pen very well. There's hardly any input lag, as you can see right here. Samsung developers have really perfected this over the last few years, so it does feel and mimic kind of like a pen and paper feeling here. And for all you creative people out there, there's obviously a sketchbook, there's Photoshop. Those tools are really great to use with the S Pen and the S9 Ultra. I use Canva a lot on this device. I can see this well if you're in like a school club and you're making like a social media flyer. Maybe you want to post something on Instagram or Facebook to give like an announcement page. You can split the windows like I said before and kind of like take images or notes and transfer that over. So if any of you guys are drawers, let me know down below if this is something you're looking at getting or you're picking up or tell me how it is on the previous tablets that you used before. And now the other feature I want to talk about is Samsung DeX. For people that don't know what DeX is, you can basically connect your Samsung device to a monitor and start using it like a regular computer. I'd recommend uh, getting these, these uh, USB hubs, which has an HDMI port and extra USB slots. So you can plug your keyboard, your mouse in and whatnot and it has a USB-C connection port, so you can just plug it in the bottom and start getting to what you want to do right away. Like many Samsung devices, the S Pen has these cool features where the button can pull up a shortcut to bring up a variety of apps. There's Smart Select, which can allow you to crop a certain piece of the screen and paste that anywhere. This is useful for taking notes, or there's also an option to make a GIF out of it. <laughs> there's also Screen Write, which the name entails, allows you to take a picture of the screen and write on it. Again, useful for taking notes if you need to mark up something from a lecture, a PowerPoint, point slide or anything like that. And as far as the performance goes, the S9 Ultra is using the same processor as the S23 series, as Z Fold series and all that stuff too. Uh, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 to be exact. This is already a very, very terrific CPU. I talked about it before in a lot of my videos. It's clocked at 3.2 gigahertz with eight cores, plenty enough to power through almost any operations that you throw at it. I haven't noticed a single slowdown yet as this device is still pretty new, but I don't expect it to get any slower by the end of this year or even next year. The Snapdragon trip is really promising as it's able to last for a very, very long time. You can definitely feel the speeds when you're multitasking with a bunch of different windows. Playing games like Dragon Ball Legends or Asphalt 9 works wonderful on this. As you can see, it's like plowing through all the processes. The graphics look beautiful on it. And you know, of course, the screen is very immersive. This chip definitely has what it takes to play and take on those games. I think you can really get lost into this because everything is just so snappy. Everything is immersive. Additionally, you also get the super fast connectivity of Wi-Fi 6E and a very large battery of 11,200 milliamps. I've been able to see it go through eight and a half to 11 hours of usage. This includes gaming, uh, note-taking, playback, and just having the screen turn on all the time. Uh, and I wouldn't have to reach for the charger uh, until like the second or third day where the battery completely dies. So very large battery indeed for a very large tablet and it makes sense. As far as the camera on here, I don't wanna talk about too much. I don't know uh, how many people out there take pictures with a tablet. I think it's better to just use your phone sometimes, but hey, let's talk about it. Uh, the main lens, you got 13 megapixels on that and the ultra wide has eight megapixels. You can record video up to 4K at 30 frames per second. So it's great to see this as well. Selfie mode does also have an ultra wide and a main lens. Both are running at 12 megapixels each. Uh, yeah, it's it's cool. The selfie camera works better as a biometric tool to unlock your face and the back camera can be used to like scan documents or anything like that. So that's really the only time I would use it. I can't see myself hiking or going out to beautiful places and taking pictures. The camera app looks just like any other Samsung device as we would come to know. So you also do get the regular options of pro, pro video, night mode, all that good stuff. I wanna show you guys some quick samples real quick, but it's nothing too amazing.
anyway, that's all I got for the S9 Ultra. Let me know down in the comments if this is something that you're looking at getting. Uh, do you already have something previous in this? What do you think of the S9 in general this year? Talk to me in the comments below. I wanna hear it going, I wanna hear it cooking up. Keep it engaged, reply to your fellow colleagues. I don't know, I'll be down in the comments too. So I wanna hear you guys talk. Anyways, until the next video guys, I'll see you then.